me say no make them, no make them take advantage of you. Na 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 yeah. Young girl wanna school ya, yeah. na follow nobody. Cause that man who I call you sexy could be twice your daddy. My no time of life greater, plus your mama do have it. Please me I beg you no make them come mess up your body. And you don't man, you don't. If you stop it Cause that man where you have a come check you When you let him tell a story You left a young girl all alone Not take your daughter Sell her to none Don't be mad You don't be mad Leave the people Put them alone Leave them, leave them Don't be mad No, 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 damn thing, yeah, go on. No matter where you till it's too late. All right, no, no if it's so the alarm. Who no fit talk up, talk up. If you no know no damn thing, yeah, go on. And if you know I'm not saying you, say you, thing, you sad and sad they don't be mad. You don't be mad. Leave the people feeling them alone. Me, I beg you, no, leave them, leave them. You don't be mad. to another edition of Voice of the Diaspora. Clinical social work practitioner Nicole Cole, who sits on two human rights commissions, Women and Gender Equality Commission and Rights of the Child Commission, will expose Guyana's darkest secret of the widespread rape and abuse of children. This is a story that Guyana does not want the world to know. I will introduce Commissioner Cole now. Commissioner Cole, Nicole Cole, welcome to Voice of the Diaspora. Greetings. Greetings, Brother Norman Brown. And I must say, I know it's after 11 in the UK and it's after 6 in Guyana. And I'm happy to be here to talk about a very uh, worrying scourge that has now... Uh, caused our uh, victims to self-harm by taking their own lives uh, because the system through which they're supposed to get justice is broken. And um, here I want to pause for a moment of silence to recognize uh, we would have lost so many children, but I always promise Kimani Phillips this is a two-year-old who was brutally raped and murdered in 2030. She died as a result of those injuries of, from sexual violence. And she never got justice in the system. And she was just two years old. A moment of silence for her. A moment of silence for 
Tanika Calder, the 18 year old who uh, took her life on the 11th of November, 2021. And a moment of silence also for the teenager, that minor in Barbies, who also took her life um, this year, I think it was June the 15th, uh, because again of rape. Just a moment of silence, please, brother Norman. Thanks. A moment of silence. And thank you, brother Norman, for uh, actually being brave enough to have uh, myself on your program talking about such a serious human rights abuse issue. And thank you. Um, and thank you for coming on too. Um, so many people are tuning in. I can actually see so many people are tuning in at the moment. Uh, I want to start by asking you um, this question. The rape of children, sexual abuse in Guyana, um, as we understand it is very widespread. But what is the degree as a commissioner um, you know, on on several boards, uh, commissions, sorry, um, rights to the child and, and, you know, women's gender rights association uh, commission and so on. You are, you are integrally involved in this. But I want to, I want to, because you'll be doing most of the talking, I want to ask you, what are we looking at in Guyana in terms of sexual abuse, rape, and violence against children in Ghana. Are we looking at one in 10? Are we looking at one in five? Are we looking at one in 50? Start by saying to the world what we're looking at before we go into the real issues of the real aspects of this rape and violence against children in Guyana, where the system seems to be a bit lazy fair in dealing with it. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Norman. And I want to start by highlighting a Child Protection Agency 2018 analysis. And this is, this is when they said two children, this is in Guyana, are abused every hour. So that gives you a, a graph in your head. This is in 2018, on the 30th of December, the Kaichor News uh, carried this story that uh, Two children are abused every hour. Now, uh, let us move forward into 2019. And uh, at the end of October, the Child Protection Agency would have released data showing that we had 3,752 child abuse uh, reports. And uh, that of itself didn't capture the entire year because remember we were talking at the end of um, October now, um, something happened before. In July in 2021, the top cop then was Nigel Hoppy. And he reported something that was very alarming. He said that there would have been a 70% increase in rape. 70%. This is Nigel Hoppy reporting on the 17th of July, 2021, almost eerily a year to today he, he is telling us that rape has seen such an increase and he is using the figures from 2020 to say that look um in 2020 in during this period we only had this amount of rape cases and now in 2021 we have this volume of rape but don't don't take his word for it we had the region eight this is the Pataro Siparuni region, the region eight commando, and I hope he's still the commander, Superintendent Michael Kingston. He said he would have reported on the 27th of August, 2021, that rape is the only serious crime that has seen an increase. And we're talking about the eight, the, sorry, region eight commando, the 27th of August, 2021. And he said, um he is he he made a plea he said last year um that the region would have recorded like 
nine rapes previously, eight, eight rape cases in 2020. But in 2021, he had 19 um, rape cases. And he of himself is saying that, look, we are not able to catch the perpetrators. The perpetrators are disappearing. This is a commando in a region where rape is rampant, is telling you that he is not able to catch the perpetrators. There is a challenge in doing that. He is challenged with uh, the resources as well as the terrain and the geographic. What this lends to is a normalization of rape and sexual offenses, um, Brother Norman, uh, to the point whereby um, males feel that uh, it's okay to hurt children as young as two, three, four, and if I go uh, younger, you perhaps will not be able to eat. Um, what is happening? Yes, it is happening. Speak to because, the and, and it is not only girls. I want to highlight the boys. There was a quarantine man arrested last year for the rape of three boys, ages 15, 16, and 17. They're all children. You're only an adult when you are 18 years old. Boys. This is a man who, who raped boys. And then you had a report sometime into early this year or late last year that he shot. He actually was out on bail and was able to shoot at one of those boys and injuring them. So this is the type of impunity that exists because you know why? No man fears that he will be punished for rape, especially if you can appeal to the CCJ and have your rape, your rape sentence reduced like Calvin Ramcharan did recently in 2022. I thank you. What, uh, uh, give us a little insight into Calvin Ramcharan and what was his case and uh, you know what transpired um calvin ramcharan was uh sentenced to 23 years i think in prison for uh the the heinous crime of rape he appealed citing that is what cruel and inhumane punishment and had that sentence reduced to 12 by the ccj yeah the ccj actually did that so now you have uh, this thing whereby uh, men who should be on a register, a man like Calvin Ramcher, he should be on a, a sexual offenders register so that we know if he's going to come back into a neighborhood, we are aware because of the nature of those who commit these sexual acts and these heinous crimes. But rather than that the court listens to him respects his human rights disavows that of 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 the victim and goes right ahead and to reduce the sentence and we have another case before the ccj that will soon come up this is the case of nisa gopal her mother and her stepdad is, is seeking to have that entire case thrown out and if you would have paid attention to some of the preliminary arguments it may very well happen because they're saying that they that 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 the evidence does not really tie uh the mother and the stepfather to the murder of that child and everybody know uh the nisa gopal case was a horrendous one and it was the headmistress of queen's college then um who actually brought that to the fore so this is how our educators are important Teachers actually observe things with children and can be the whistleblower in getting uh, all of us involved in trying to protect our most vulnerable. Because this, this law that I have in my hand, and this is the child-friendly version done by UNICEF uh, in collaboration with the Child Protection Agency, Rights of the Child, uh, you have uh, a United Nations, um, a lot of agencies. Yeah. This law that I have in my hand, the child-friendly version, speaks very clear. Every citizen, all of us, resident and domiciled in 
the eight to three thousand square miles of Guyana, we have a responsibility to protect children. It is clear. The evidence is clear. So you can't tell me that, oh, the, the, the child that crying over that side, it doesn't really affect you. And man is, is that business. Every citizen, all of us have a responsibility to protect children because Norman, without the village raising you and I and protecting us, some of us would not have turned out how we are as much as some of us may have been hurt and traumatized, but we need to have all of us involved. And Guyana is signatory to the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. Guyana signed that international convention in 1989. See how long ago? And we ratified it in 1990. It means then that we as a country must report to the UN CRC committee, the, the Committee on the Rights of the Child, on how children are being treated, what is being done by the state to protect children. So for example, if the state engages in acts of violence that harms children, then the state too can be sanctioned for violating children's human rights because enshrined in all those articles in the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, it tells you that children rights are human rights and that when we treat with children, we must respect and protect those rights. So that's most critical. But let us go to the most recent law signed by the, the former president, David Arthur Granger. I remember lobbying for this law. This particular law is what makes it impossible. I want to state this clearly. No child is to be picked up anymore in Guyana and charged with wandering. That is off the books. This law provides for diversionary measures. This is why at the NOC, you do not have the volume of children there that are charged with wandering because the wandering charge used to be abused by parents and the police. Both abused it and put children and criminalized them. I am happy that this became a law in 2018. What has happened since? The Attorney General moved earlier this year to amend this law. This law is now amended to include children to be charged or tried with adults for serious crimes committed. But the Juvenile Justice Act is Guyana's most recent law enacted to protect children in conflict with the law. This is why uh, we must treat children like Janine Peters the alleged torture of that child in police custody, it goes against every international instrument as well as the Juvenile Justice Bill or the Juvenile Justice Act of 2018. The state have a responsibility to respect and protect children rights as human rights and rape as an offense seriously violate those rights. And the reason why rape is so rampant it's because within the system even the police have been interdicted from duty uh for engaging themselves in rape of minor children it is happening it is rampant and it is something that we are going to see an increase in because with the oil revenue let us not uh, beat around the bush, men are richer than women. And so men have the money power. And with this increased revenue, we are going to see a massive amount of child sexual abuse, child sex trafficking, child sex tourism. And talking about trafficking, on the 30th of July, Guyana will observe World Day Against Human Trafficking under the team use and abuse of technology because on the online platform brother norman is the new frontier by which pedophiles and predators are luring unsuspecting victims into rape murder drugging 
so many cases of young girls being drugged and sometimes their own family members set it up drugged and raped viciously and here i want to highlight my most recent intervention this is a case whereby the police knows what they're supposed to do but for whatever intents and purposes it does not happen so a child is raped the child goes to the police station the police knows that the protocol is to escort the child to get a medical done. You must get that DNA. Do you know what happened? The police indicated to the mother that it is her responsibility to take the child. Now, this is a very poor woman. A single parent doesn't have the resources, mind you, and she doesn't know that the police have that responsibility. So the child is the child went home and and took a shower. The child went home and bed when that should not have happened. The child only got seen by the medical officer after Nicole Cole got really look. I can't tell you how traumatized I was by this case. I cried for days and it haunted my sleep because there's two men who brutally raped this minor and she's not a teen as yet. Wow. To the point whereby she, man, I don't want to talk about some of the trauma that she has in June. Speak, speak to the world. But for her, Speak but for her world. little soul, I am truly hurt by what has been done to her. And having called the station sergeant and tell him about all of this, this is me telling the, telling the man, the policeman, that look, this is the law. And this is what you're supposed to do because he was trying to push me around. And I said to him, I said, look, you are going to make me go inside, inside the commission where I sit and I'm going to make some calls and I'm going to try to get someone from the director of public prosecution office involved in this case. I think when he heard that, he said to me, um, look, uh, all right, all right, all right, um, I can I can uh, we, we can um I can't talk to you now, Miss Cole, but um I can I can so he got a bit nervous. Now I'm telling you this, I got wind of this case close to midnight. So I'm working, I work all hours. You see cases of rape, I don't sleep. You get me up three, four, five in the morning, I'm up, especially rape of children. I don't sleep. So this is he now trying to indicate to me that he's getting help. After the fact that he did not do his job. And I, I, I called him out over it. And mind you, I have the number of the acting commission of police, Hicken. I tried that number. I tried many, some of the top commanders of numbers I tried at that hour. But I want to tell you, not everybody answered their phone or answered the call in the dead of night. But I do. Okay? And in the group, in, in my group in on the constitutional commission that I sit, I sent out a plea for help. I really begged for help. And I had a response by a commissioner who was able to get on to the Minister of Human Services. And I must commend her for answering the call at that hour. She got involved. And that is what we want from our ministers. At any hour, if there's an emergency, you must respond because let me tell you what was going to happen with that case. $50,000 was already being offered by the grandmother of one of the perpetrators for the, for the story to be dropped. And it is, it is my information that within that particular area, the rape is so rampant because there's a checkbook justice system 
between a particular station and some ranks within there. Note, I say some ranks. Sorry. Yes, because we cannot paint all the police as bad. There are those who are very good and they do their work diligently and they answer the call. But there are those who are rotten and we got to weed them out. Pun intended. You hear me? We got to weed them out. They are no good. This particular police, when he when he actually returned the call, well, I was surprised because I didn't expect to get so, I was angry with the police. I really, I fought with the police. I'm not gonna lie to you, fight, big fight on the phone. When he's going to call me back now, guess what he's calling me back to do, Brother Norman? The man is calling me back to beg for mercy. Well, I didn't understand. First of all, I was like stunned. What mercy is he begging for? Because I said that I'm going to expose it. Because I said that you did not do the right thing. You allowed all this evidence to disappear. Let me tell you, rape convictions in Guyana have improved. I want to commend uh, Team Supreme, the Honorable uh, Chief Justice, as well as the Chancellor, and everyone who have worked hard. I myself traveled to Saudi Esquibo in 2019. On the 16th of September, 2019, the sexual offenses court opened in the Esquibo County. And with all the uh, mo uh, modernity to try to bring uh, closure and to get convictions, and the British High Commission has been a, a proud sponsor of these courts but we have a rot in the system if it is that the police are the premier law enforcement people and we as citizens are to come to them when we are traumatized and somebody has committed a crime and they in turn will turn around and corrupt the case do you understand where we are do you understand why Tanika Calder in November killed herself? And then we have that young student uh, killed herself. Within seven months, we lost two females to suicide. And it is because of the alleged rapes perpetrated and the police response. Who lies at the heart of it? Now, in the case of Tanika Calder, you had this type of confrontation, this, this embarrassing, dehumanizing of her. What happened to Tanika Calder, just for the sake of the viewers? Tanika Calder was escorted home by a known taxi. This man is known to the family. So the mother trusted him to bring home her daughter. And he raped that child viciously. When the child exposed him, he tried to make it out as though she is telling um, a lie as if she consented. And then at the Coven John station, some kind of quacks down there because they cannot be trained in sexual offenses to actually do that. They had her coming and, they, and, and there was a confrontation in the presence of her mother, the alleged perpetrator that even went into her past that has that's totally irrelevant to the to to what he did to her and tanika calder feeling the brunt of what has been done to her and then it found its way on social media people were attacking her she could not cope she harmed herself she committed suicide similar to what the young lady did in region six and this is this is what bothers me the system has become so numb and here i'm remembering the tune by lincoln park i become so numb i can't feel you see when we become numb brother norman the, the minute i don't become bothered by the rape of children as young 
as six months old, as young as four months, one year, two year, three, the minute it doesn't bother me, I have lost my protective sensation as what they say if you're testing for diabetes in the leg. I have lost my protective sensation. I am not worth my salt as a social worker. Get me out the system because we got to feel. We got to feel. We got to become annoyed. We got to become emotional. Many times I'm told I am too passionate and if I want to live to see old age. Let me tell you this. I don't want to old age in a Guyana whereby men feel it's okay to rip apart the lives of children, dirty men, and women who hide them because you have the mothers, mothers who hide when the men interfere with their children. But I was coming them. to that question. Fire right. bond them. Fire right. bond them. Those parents who know, you know that this man is troubling your child. And you sit down there and you're doing nothing because you bring in a dollar. If I get to know it's the last day you earn a dollar, I intend to come after you wherever you are because children deserve protection. And they deserve protection because they are the most vulnerable. Oh, look at them. How can people do that? It's disgusting. It's and those disgusting. mothers need to hang their heads in shame. Clinical social work practitioner Nicole Cole, who sits on two human rights commissions, Women and Gender Equality Commission, Rights of the Child Commission, talking to Voices of the Diaspora about the horrific rape and abuse of children in Guyana. Guyana's darkest secret is being revealed tonight, right here on Voices of the Diaspora. Nicole, uh, I want to ask you, Many say that it through the through the passage of time in Guyana, through the decades, um, people would have always looked at pedophilia, looked at the abuse, sexual abuse of children, as a cultural thing. Many of us grew up in Guyana, seeing the minibus drivers, the taxi drivers, having young school girls in the front seat playing music that you know that are sexually suggestive and and that rape which is statutory would have been going on for decades and decades and many of us would have just looked at it as not as something that is depraved as something that is you know evil unacceptable uh, and normal so, and, yeah. and I, and so i wanted to uh, you know and so it, it became like a cultural stuff you have in the amarini community we saw in the rupanuni um during our last independence celebration uh, a, a, a powerful woman coming out and highlighting the rape of young girls by family members we're talking about brothers uncles dads and all of these things i want you to I want you to first look at and deal with the issue of where we saw and to some extent ignored situations where in terms of transport, we never said, you know, we want to bus for our children. Our children were left at the mercy of minibus and taxi drivers, older men because of money, because of economic prowess, because of the, you know, the light of a vehicle and young women like cars and buses and music and that rape has gone on for so long that there are people who are in the justice system people who are in the high echelons in our society today people who are in parliament would have been victims of that sort of thing and didn't see it as what it is talk to us about that and talk to us about you know the families, the dads, the, the the brothers, the uncles. How grave, how widespread is this? Uh, you have touched on a gray area of crime in Guyana. That's because the culture, the culture of incest. You see my terminology? Yes. Culture the culture of incest in those ethnic groups 
if you do the research, goes way back. Yes. When it wasn't, we didn't have all these laws implemented for persons to see it as something that is wrong. But I want to highlight to you, I was on an investigation in Region 9. And Region 9 in serious trouble too. Because the Region 9 commander reported in 2021 that sexual offenses, this is Upper Tackle 2, Upper Essequibo, and the superintendent is Rafael Rose, if, if he is still there. He said that there has been uh, reported cases of sexual offenses and trafficking in persons. I was investigating a case in, in Letem, and this, this young lady i want to commend her you see it is hard when you endured rape by your father but then you want to come and save your sister from the same thing this man had this culture or this man initiates all his daughters and i think he had 11 or 12 yeah over like a dozen children perhaps nine girls and he usually takes them farming or fishing. And that's when they are raped. And there, here was a older sister trying to prevent the rape of her younger sibling. She was trying to prevent her younger sister. So she actually reached out in an attempt to get help. But again, you have a system. If I am, um, for any intents and purposes, I belong to an affluent section of the society. And my affluence can mean that I fund you, I give you um, ATVs, I am, I, I, I support things that you have. So then when I commit um, a, an offense, how do you now come to arrest me? Who funds you? You know, the, 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 the saying, who, who pays the piper cause the truth? Yeah. So here you have some of the very ranks who should be doing due diligence. And it's not doing anything because, um, you know, nothing can really happen. And this is why you have this resort to self-harm now. This is a growing phenomenon and, and it will continue to grow because the system is broken from within. And I outlined to you a recent case of a child raped whereby the police begging me for mercy. Don't want me to say anything because he said he had an inspection. That was his first thing. And then he come back and said he got a domestic problem too. And all I could do was to ask him if he's a father. Are you a father? I had to ask him that. When he admitted that he's a father, I tremble. And that's where the problem lies, Brother Norman. You so see, you for say, many of our girls, you're saying the system they don't have fathers in the home. They deaf don't have fathers the You're saying the system is deaf to the cries of these children that are being raped and abused. Um, you are saying that this abuse is widespread the rape of children in oil rich guyana it is, is widespread, widespread. Indeed, you are saying as a commissioner on two commissions when you look at the structures set up the relevant authorities the organizations that are responsible for child protection for the dispensation of justice for all of these uh care and, and other aspects that a civilized society must have that is working effectively um, yes. to protect our children and to to bring uh, you know care and relief and counseling to those who are who would have been affected when you look at Guyana system as a commissioner Nicole Cole here with us as a commissioner, how do you rate the Guyanese system? Speak to us about that. Uh, um, rating it. 
how do you rate the entire system on a, as to protect? Scale, on a scale of <laughs> zero to ten, you want me to rate it? Yes, go ahead. Like really? Yes. Man, we're at three. We're not even halfway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're a tree. I, 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 I must be brutally honest with you. Look, just recently, a twelve. Uh, this young lady is now eighteen, I think. But when, or twenty, when, when she was raped, or she's twenty. When she was raped, she was twelve. And the man just got sentenced in twenty twenty-two. And she's and she's 18 or 20. So you see the length of time it took for her to get justice? Can we count the years? So you have uh yes, we are moving towards improving the system in these cases. We want the system to be improved. But here is what the system does. You have a toddler. And the reason why I want to highlight children, the ages two, three, four, five, a man got off this year in court. They said he was found not guilty of raping a four year old. I want to tell you something with these very cases for, for, for children. When kids, when children are abused, there is a special process called the forensic interview. Yeah, yeah. Now, in this forensic interview, Brother Norman, if the child cognitively, a three-year-old, will only be able to uh, speak to that level. Definitely. Of course, children, because of their exposure, yeah. they can speak more. But here is what the state wants. And there is something called the law of evidence. Yeah. You may know, I may know, that this child has been abused by this person the child would have called the name of the person but you know two critical elements that would make that file return and there would be no recommendation of charges because the child at age two or three or four did not state clearly listen to me the time and location of the rape. You Look, talk. You talk about forensics. So, are, are mm -hmm. you saying to me that the doctor has checked a four-year-old, a two-year-old? There has been penetration. There has the been hymen, penetration. The hymen is not intact. Has been the hymen is not, not intact. intact. That is, that and is the, right. there's a determination that there is there has been sexual contact with that child and you're saying to me that the system and the legal system is saying because the child cannot say the location or whatever guyana is a wicked and evil place it's a backward place if that is happening because a system um, is there to protect Norman, children and i'm being angry if, now it is not if it is happening i'm Go telling ahead. you i'm telling you of a case that i would have begged look I have run to the DPP office so many times this year, begging her to review cases. Okay? And let me tell you straight up, the law is technical and there are certain elements in the evidence as much as the child may call a name, I am going to say it again. If the child cannot say time and location, so I'm in front of a superintendent and he can see that I am really hurt. And he looked at me and he said, Miss Cole, let me explain something to you. He said, I really think that the forensic interviewing process needs to be revamped. If we are going to see any success for these young children who are being harmed, he was, he was blunt with me. He said, you need to revamp it because you have these child advocacy centers and no disrespect to the agent, to those NGOs that are working along with the Child Care and Protection Agency in the Ministry of Human Services 
and us are the rights to the child commission all of us who are working no disrespect to us but you have a system that is damn well broken when a child hymen can be removed and you're telling me that because this child can't say the time and location that the is man not, uh, who troubled her goes free goes free um, and that is man. that is shocking you, Nicole, Nicole, that is shocking. And I'll tell you this. I'm telling you this, and I'm glad you're speaking this evening. And I am going to give you the opportunity to speak all night. I'm not going to interject or anything. I'm no, no, telling you this. That's fine. I'm telling you I, this. I, I am saying this to you. I'm and I'm sorry for that. Something is wrong with the system. If a vulnerable child at that age is interfered with sexually, and the system is unable to investigate on behalf of that heinous crime, to bring the perpetrator or perpetrators to justice. If that system grill a four-year-old child... I think we lost child, for a moment. I hope he's there. I'm here, I'm here. If, if the system... So we may have to come back. No, you're here, Nicole. You're on but, the uh, But yes, they're really if troubling the, the kids. If the system... Um, if the system is troubling the children the way is, saying, it's disgusting is what is happening go ahead go ahead Nicole. um truly it is and um for what is happening in region eight and region nine even region one um this year in 2022 region one came under the radar for some of the high incidents there of um drugging and raping and the rapes that are occurring region there. one is barima wine you read i'm hoping that we can get back uh brother norman here, i think i'll I, end the call I'm and here, then uh, i'm here with you you are live i'm not seeing him Nicole, i wonder if he's hearing me you are live um, you are live on the program you are actually but, live uh there is a cry here for help and uh for more resources uh human resources in fact uh for we should have more uh, social workers at the community level practice, which would be great for them um, to help with some of the scourges in those terrain. And they would have to be resourced. Nicole, because, you're, you're live uh, with me here. Yeah. You know, basket cannot fetch water. So we need to have that system. I'm going to log out for now and uh, don't, hopefully. Don't log out, out your hair. Nicole, you, uh, you uh, are. Nicole, episode. Nicole, you are live on the program. I can hear you. I can hear you. I think you're getting a problem with your system. But you're live on the program. I can hear you. Nicole Cole, there. Um, I think there's some problem with our system. I, I think she can't hear me. Um, but I, I've been here with her all the time, as you know. Um, clinical social work practitioner Nicole Cole here on Voice of the Diaspora. Um, you know, and, and so I think we had some technical difficulties there. I don't know if they're sabotaging the program. <laughs> the program is heavy. And I, you know, I, I, I don't put anything past our system in the, you know. Um, Nicole is revealing things and um and so you know but it is not on my part here where the glitch is happening so i think that it's on our part um we're talking about child raping Guyana actually we're talking about child raping Guyana and on this program we have clinical social work practitioner nicole cole who sits on two human rights commissions women and gender equality commission and rights of the child commission and she's talking about what is happening in Guyana, what is happening with the rape of children how the system is responding to it and i want people to understand that we have a, a, a large percentage of female mps we have a large percentage of women professionals but it seems as if there is a nonchalant approach um, a nonchalant approach uh, to this situation and I wonder if a society has gotten so cold um, uh, and so you know carefree 
about um, that sort of heinous crime, the rape of children. Of course, it is Nicole Cole's time here. Um, we would have had a bit of interruption. Maybe it was coming from her end. Um, very powerful program, the way she expresses herself. And then there is some sort of interference with the connection. Um, of course, it's not on this side. Um, she couldn't hear me. She couldn't see me, but we were live on together. Uh, you know, the system, you know, you know, when these things happen and we expose the world, the wickedness of the leaders and, you know, the system and those who uphold, uphold the system, these little things happen. Um, you know, that is, to me, to some extent, inevitable. But uh, Nicole has spoken. Um, hopefully she calls in again. She's here with us again. Um, Nicole Cole is here with us again. Uh, and, and so, Nicole, welcome back. I, I wasn't off. You were live. I think something happened to your system. I was seeing you and listening to you all the time. Um, so I think it's something happening to your system. But let us let us proceed. Actually, you froze up. I, I yeah. saw you froze on the screen. No, so no, um, I I was actually active. But I think it's it's okay. your system. I think they're interfering with the program because it's fiery, and I think you're bringing out things. And I'm serious. I'm deadly serious. You know, um, I don't put it past them. On a very serious note, my son got concerned. He said somebody put somebody put in the comment section with the post you made yesterday that I have to, they hope I'm not living in Guyana. Yeah, they said so they, they like, hope they don't harm you. Like, yes, and I my saw son that. was like, mommy, somebody will kill you. I said, well, look, I remembered uh, years ago in intervening when I worked at the Campbellville Health Center. And there was this powerful man who had the father of this child that he wants to sleep with. You saw money powerful? He had the father brought that child to be tested and checked to make sure everything is intact and something like like didn't feel right. I I persuaded the child to talk to me and she said to me, she said, I want to go to school. I really want to go to school. I don't want what my father is doing. So he told he the father was telling me that she don't want to go to school and how she then heat. Are you hearing me? As though she's, you know, she in heat. I said, what, that's what the are father. you saying to me? That's a father. He brought his daughter to be checked medically because whatever he was going to do, whether he was going to barter her, to sell her, whatever he's going to do, he was prepared. And so listen who got involved. Nicole Cole got involved and disrupted his plan. So I call child protection. And so they now have to come to the health center to collect the child with the police because this is a clear case of a father engaged in the technical prostitution of his daughter and i wasn't gonna have it uh -uh. you see by the time i stand up outside the amount of um things that whisper in my ears if i don't know this man working with these big rich people and the people come and shoot me up right there and you know let me tell you something I turned and I looked at the individual who was who was intimidating me. I said, let me tell you something. If I lose my life in defense of a defenseless child, I've died for a worthy cause. Yes, yes. You see, we must see something worthy. Yes, yes, yes. Worthy, we must see it. And on this Nelson Mandela Day, I bring to you in the spirit of Ubuntu, I am because we are. Every child that is out there could be my child. Every one of them. And they deserve protection. I don't have to know the child. I just cry bitter tears when I see children abused. I don't care the color or the creed. They are humans deserving of protection. All children. Every one of them. And so this, this threat that I received, I turned the threat on its head. And I said, I am prepared to die. I put up my hands. I said, I'm prepared to die. But I just want, if I die, I don't want my death to go in vain. My death must be used as a, as a, as a catalyst to freeing the abused children, to ensuring that there is some kind of law that makes justice, access to justice for children as young as two in this country they can have justice because as i speak to you let us never forget 
Kimani Phillips, brutally sodomized in this country in 2013 and died. It's a case out of Haslington. Wow. And she never got justice. Don't take my word for it. Read the editorial of Stabrook News, the 16th of April, 2016. No justice for Kimani. And I used the Kimani Phillips case in a UG Tain Torkheim forum where the DPP was sitting right there and I begged for the case if the case could have been reopened. But then you, I, I get to learn something in law. The language discharged and dismissed are very important. When a case is discharged, it can come back by the normal. But what you see when it, when it gets dismissed, does it, you know? That's it. The That's justice it. system in itself. You see this thing here? That it's supposed to be balanced. There is a gross imbalance within it. Because I am saying to you, as a commissioner sitting on both the rights of the child and women and gender, that the system is not giving justice to our most vulnerable, our toddlers. Oh God, they have to endure that abuse. They're going to have lots of different um, traumatic effects coming off of that abuse that they're going to live with. And in the end, they don't even get no justice no because justice. in the forensic interview, they're supposed to know at three, at two, at four, they got to say time and location, time and location, time and location. Remember that. They have to say time and location. It's sad. Time Nicole, Nicole Cole, clinical social work practitioner, who sits on two commissions, two human rights commissions, women and gender equality and rights of the child commissions, talking here with Vice, Voice of the Diaspora. And we're talking about the rape of children. We're talking about a system that is failing our children. I want to ask you this question because we have five minutes left to close. We have in our political system, in our leadership echelons, a uh, significant amount of qualified women, which we call professionals, in the legal system, in parliament, in, in all um, the institutions, departments, and so on, in our society. There is a significant um, presence of women. Uh, do you believe that with that significant, significant presence of women, um, that they are concerned about what is happening to children in Guyana, especially young girls or teenagers or babies or underage children? Do you think that, that, that they are connected? Do you think that they are outrage you think that we have so many members of parliament who are females i said this in my writings recently that i spoke with my good friend on ferguson and i consider her a good friend um former minister on ferguson who is now on opposition mp and she promised me more than a year ago that she was going to take up the mantle to fight to ensure that sexual abuse of children um and women in general um she would fight to ensure that you know that it's reduced or eliminated she has done nothing since then i wrote about it so i want to ask you um in closing do you think that with the influence of powerful women in our society that they are not too concerned about what is happening to children in the in the darkest time in that country i think I think this is the most, um, what must I say, disheartening and disconcerting phenomena in that women who society looks upon to be what we call upstanding and should be more nurturing and stuff like that. Um, there is something going on within that, you know, they have this song, you've lost that loving feeling, you've yes. lost that loving feeling, and now it's gone, gone, gone. 
there is a there is more apathy than empathy there is more cruelty than compassion there is more indifference than showing or lending a helping hand and it takes all of of us in the society to really uh bell the cat yeah or to face the elephant in the room or to face the jaguar coming at us or the lion in the jungle we've got to own up to the fact that in wherever we are and for some of those persons who are members of parliament I know that it may be difficult for some of them to even face their own trauma because you highlighted when you came on first that many persons in the society all the way, wherever you find them, may have had an ugly experience. Yes. And I think I shared with you some stats yes. that two children every hour, hour. is yes. a, in Vignano, according to an analysis done in 2018. What, what I would like to see happen. The Human Rights Commission's report to Parliament. So, for example, both the rights of the child and women and gender would have given in reports, statutory reports. Those very members of Parliament have a duty to look at our recommendations. Look, this law came out from a recommendation, from a report submitted by the Women and Gender Equality Commission that I sit on. I am their representative on rights of the child. I'm an ex-officio there. Yes. And this, this was included in, in our recommendation and it was acted upon. So right now, I know that we have a lobby. We're trying to lobby the speaker, Brother Norman, to suspend the standing orders and for there to be a debate of our recommendations the commissions can't exist and we're doing work and you don't want to hear what we're doing you don't want to take the recommendation look we give you the report you put it on a desk and it get dust that's not how it's supposed to be we are supposed to have our parliamentarians act on it that is why the commissions are set up but I think some persons are too busy trying to get rid of us. So if you get rid of us, there's nothing really no, well, Nicole Cole can't scream at you no more. Huh? Think again. I will always be adv advocating because in my profession, I'm a social worker. So even if I don't wear the hat as commissioner anymore, I still will be relevant in society and i'm still going to ensure that you do what is right still want to appeal to the speaker of the national assembly and those parliamentarians and of course parliament is really sitting parliament have a sitting coming up and it's like if we we are having this um this nice honky dory and in the middle our most vulnerable are suffering the suffering has reached to the point whereby our young women don't feel that the system gives them any justice. But it's not. And there is it's not giving them. them. It's not giving Thank them any justice. And I'm saying this now. We're closing, and I will give you um, the, the opportunity to wrap up. We're closing now. But I'm saying this here that this is the commencement of a struggle um, for Guyana and for. Guyana to ensure that it put its act it puts its act together to ensure that this issue of the rape of children is put on the front burner at every level in society. It is unacceptable, it's barbaric, it's 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 ancient, it's 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 uncivilized. There's no society that considers itself as a civilized society that would allow its children to go through that and we are all to be blamed we are all are consumed we are we are all involved we are all consumed and this is a struggle that i will be relentless in 
um, to ensure that every single one of us in society um, would lend uh, that voice and that energy to ensure that this stops. And I am saying it, I mean it. Um, I want us to ask you this final question. What do you recommend? What are some of your recommendations um, to ensure that, you know, that a society can tackle this situation collectively and uh, it, it, with the, you know, with the view of assuaging it, with the view of healing it, stopping it? Uh, I, I want to ask you, and I also want to ask you to say to the people in the diaspora and to the people at home, uh, Guyanese, um, how they can help you, Nicole Cole, in getting this work done and to, to empower you as a powerful, genuine, you know, activist, uh, a, a, a women's rights activist who is really passionate about this struggle to save our children from abuse, from rape, and so on. How can they help you? And so talk to us about the recommendations quickly. Um, what do you think the solutions can be? How can we collectively come together to solve this issue, to work and to assuage it? And how can the society help you and your organization um, to, to be empowered? to sort this out. Nicole Cole here with us on Voice of the Diaspora, uh, women's rights practitioner. Go ahead, Nicole. We must have uh, the standard operating procedure as it relates to sexual offenses clearly defined in every police station. It must be visible to the public. In that way, anyone entering can see these are the steps who must escort you the police must escort you so the police doesn't get away with what he did in that recent case in trying to say that it's the mother's responsibility to escort that child to be medically examined the health protocols there is something called it used to be pep now it's prep it's a specific regimen given that should be given within 72 hours of rape to prevent the transmission of hiv yeah. that is missing from the stations right that should be clear right there so that they know of course the morning after pill uh that pill is to ensure that um they, there they is no pregnant yeah. yeah well 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 listen we have a real this problem is is humongous i want to say this the volume of teenage mothers and pregnancy in region nine within anai and its environs it will make your skin grow and this is from persons who want you to go in to do something again young young children pregnant children mm. children whose lives are put at risk because i would like to remind everyone for every child who is pregnant it's a high risk pregnancy but Nicole, if for every child that is pregnant, the system is supposed to become involved. The legal system is supposed to investigate. Is Guyana a backward country? Is it a country that has wealth and people enjoying that wealth at the expense of the future? Are they killing the future? Are they insensitive? They're, if a child is pregnant, Nicole, if a child is pregnant, from community to national levels must know that a child shouldn't be pregnant somebody must be held responsible uh -huh. what, 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 if, what? The child, if the child is impregnated by a sitting minister in your own government well if that is exposed the fight will be a serious one but i think there's a lot of secrets have, tell you have no in within all of this political um arena yeah 
have persons on both sides who, who have been caught with their hands in the cookie jar, who are pedophiles. Are you office. saying that ministers of government, the people in the opposition, powerful politicians, are a part of this? I am saying that there are people who roam the corridors of power, power. who are guilty of, of impregnating children. Who are guilty of impregnating children in this society and because i live here brother norman and i want to live a bit longer i will talk in code in coded language when you have a sitting minister who can openly disrespect women in the national assembly and here i want yes, to, yes. I, i'm not afraid to call him because I call yes. him to go I still want him to be gone. If there's any forum where I am and he's there, I got to write up a placard quick and just and just stick it up and say, right? When you have abuse occurring in your highest house, in the parliament, and you have people compromised at the top, they're speaking with four, they're speaking from both corners of their mouth. They can't call a spade a spade. You see why, Brother Norman, nobody will want me in their party? They're going to kick. I am disruptive. I am like what John Lewis said. You must be prepared to make good and necessary trouble. trouble. That's yes. what Nicole Cole does. So you're not going to like me because I'm coming to say it is wrong. What you did there is wrong and it cannot be condoned. So if it was wrong when the former president put out the... The former first lady, lady to sleep. yes, yes, abused her, abused her psychologically. Yes, yes, it is also wrong. We have a former president who, who the former first lady, brought abuse allegations against him. And nothing a came out of it. Nothing came right? out of it. Right? And what came? Look, even nobody wants to talk because every, everybody frightened the face. That's my like for those who want to, want to know. Me. She that's, hope I don't live in the that's and they're fair. I'm yeah. one person. Sorry, go ahead. No, I'm saying that the, the former president is Barrage at deal and nothing came yes, out of it. Yes, his the wife is, is, is hold on. Is, and I wanted to yes. say the current de facto president. The current de facto president. president. Right? Yes, yes the and current, I am yes, yes, former yes. president and he runs the, the country. He runs the country. Right? And I, he I runs him. The um, Chinese told me that he run things. He, he run things. things. Yes. Nicole, so if anybody wants to help my social work, yes, go it ahead. It can be done via a donation through a uh, moneygram. I would like to get teddy bears, care pack. You see, a stuffed toy for many of the children who have been abused. Um, uh, a soft, furry something. Um, a play art. I do a lot of art therapy, play yes. therapy. So you would need things like art, care packages, things things for them to play and to draw because sometimes children don't talk when they're abused. Sometimes the speech cut, but they will draw or they will color. So yes. those are some of the things that will help the care packages, the um, uh, uh, teddy bears. But for right now, I need cash to do some of my investigative work because traveling is a cost. And if I want to go till into the Pomeroon, Brother Norman, mm. I may have to overnight. So I may have to put up at the guest house. All this is a cause. And not well, everyone wants to give us the well, resources give, give, to do the investigation. Give the people in the diaspora your contact here. Give them, if it's a contact number, your Facebook page. Whatever you want to give them. And I promise you that this program will follow your work. This program will follow your work and and it will be by your side to ensure that you are recognized you're seen for what you're doing and 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 so that the world could know that there is a fighter so take the opportunity to quickly before we close quickly give sure. them um, your I'm, contact I'm give them my, uh, my whatsapp contact because yes. i know whatsapp it's, uh, it's cost effective 660 and of course you'll put 592 at the front yes Six six zero seven eight zero seven. Yes. My WhatsApp again. You'll put five nine two at the front. Six six zero seven eight zero seven. 
there is some places I want to go, Brother Norman. I may have to book a ticket to travel in the region. Yes. Who pays? Who pays that? But then somebody's telling me that I need to travel. Look, I have a case I intervened in over a year ago. I want to go back and follow up on that case. But I need resources. You need. And look, somebody just said here, part two of this program is needed with Miss Nicole Cole. So people but are resonating you. with you. People are resonating with you. UK are up after midnight. Yes, people in okay. America are following this. People in Guyana are following you. this. Thank you so much. I didn't know what got into your head to tag me. But all I could have done is to cry for help because you're yes. talking about something and I needed help. So I was like, the spirit works in mysterious ways. I'm sitting on the seawall Friday, praying and asking God. I said, help me to help the children, oh God. I said, because I need to move. And social work is not done in the office. It's in the margins. I'm in the margin, Brother Norman. I'm in the gutter. Clear, doing the dirt Clear, Ford, Clear Ford just said, Miss Cole will need private security when traveling to those remote places we don't want our dead may god continue to bless make miss cole when the ogle said you're getting so much support nico cole thank you for being here on vice of diaspora and thank i take the so advice much. of our viewers to say there should be a part two we will be following you i urge all that are looking um uh, uh, to contact a friend and to support Nicole's struggle because we have to, as Guyanese, we have to work to stop the rape of babies and children in our society. And I'm calling on every politician. I'm calling on Sherrod Duncan on his program to put this on the front burner. I'm calling on the government of Guyana to put this on the front burner. I'm calling on the police to put this on the front burner. I'm calling on every school, the University of Guyana. I'm calling on the churches. We all are involved and we all are consumed. This struggle will not stop. Because our children must not be raped, must not be hurt, must not, must not be destroyed. I am calling on that. And this struggle will continue until we get the justice and the protection of our children. Nicole Cole, thank you for being here on Voice of the Diaspora. Thank you, Brother Norman Brown. And please play the song. This is your God. song. This is your song. No make them, no make them take advantage of you. Na 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 na, yeah. Young girl wanna school ya, no follow nobody. Cause that man who you call you sexy could be twice your daddy. Man, no time of like greater. Plus your mama do have it. Please me, I beg you, no make. Them come mess up your body And you dirty man You dirty man Leave the people beating them and rule You dirty man You know it's wrong So leave the people beating them and rule It's a disgrace man If you stop it Cause that man where you ever come check you When you let him tell a story You let your young girl all alone Not take your daughter Sell her to no Dirty man, man. You dirty man. man Leave the people Feed me them alone Leave them, leave them You dirty man, man.
Nuevo 